Well, hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of Early Childhood Science Explorations with Cindy and Jeff. I'm Jeff Winokur, an early childhood and elementary science educator, and... Hi, I'm Cindy Hoisington, an early childhood science educator. And we're here today to talk about uh, our favorite classroom animals, and in this case we're looking at mealworms. That's mealworms, M-E-A-L worms. And uh, mealworms are among our favorite classroom animals for three major reasons. Number one, they're interesting to uh, students, less so to adults. Uh, I can attest to that. They're very safe to handle and observe, very safe to handle and observe, and they're easy to get and cheap. So here's what we're going to do is show you a container of mealworms that Cindy bought yesterday. Mm -hmm. at Actually pet at store. a local pet store. At the local yes. pet store. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to pour out the container on a plastic plate. And what we have are 50 regular sized mealworms. And you can mm. see that they are um, uh, about an inch or so long, maybe a little longer. Uh, this one is not moving very much, but the others are moving fairly well, and they're, they're in bran flakes because they like meal, and we'll show you how to care for them. Now again, these are phenomenal because you can handle them very safely. Mm -hmm. I'm not the bravest person in the world. I can <laughs> handle them easily. Um, and if we were saying that we'd be looking at caterpillars and butterflies, all of you would have said, ah, butterflies. We all love butterflies, but they only represent a very small portion of the insect world. And um, we These think actually look a lot like caterpillars. They have very much the same body parts as caterpillars. So one of the reasons we might want to use them along with butterflies is to make comparisons, to look at um, body parts and structure function relationships. And uh, they also um, do something very interesting, and that is that they have a similar life cycle to butterflies, although they don't, that is that they oh, have... Oh, I can feel its little legs walking across my hand. The, one of the I'm reasons sorry about I put that. these all on plastic was because um, they don't cling on to the plastic very well. They cling on to paper very well, and they might climb off of the paper plate, and many teachers, kids don't mind it, but teachers do. So just so you know, plastic is fine because they'll... Um, move around and have a harder time um, oh, climbing. Look at that. Uh -huh. This can climb on the paper. And on, on my hand. And on your hand and, and on children's hands as well. What we want to really do is look at their body parts, look at them, their behaviors, uh, take a look to see how they move around, oh, uh, what they use their body parts for. They seem to have a back Do you ever use and one of these to look a little do, more closely? I do. As a matter of fact, we have one right here. It's a bug box. We call this a bug box with a magnifier built right in. And we can easily look at the mealworm and its body parts there. What you'll notice and what children always notice is that they have six legs in the front, uh, even one-sixth of their body. So they drag their whole bodies along, which if you think about it, is pretty incredible. Um, now, the other interesting aspects of uh, mealworms, as you keep them for a while, You'll notice that they shed skin so that we can observe growth and development. They also change, as I mentioned earlier, and here's an example of some empty pupa shells. Um, and this looks like a different animal altogether, but they go from the larva stage that we originally hey. looked at to a pupa. They come out of the pupa and we can now observe them. Uh, so they're more like caterpillars and butterflies than we would have guessed from the name. Correct, mealworms. correct. There's the idea of mealworms. Um, and here we see the adult mealworm, and it doesn't, like you said, Cindy, it doesn't look anything like a worm there. These are beetles. They are actually sold as what we, again, call mealworms, but they're insects, not worms. And they have a four-stage life cycle. They go from larva, to pupa, to adult. And how long have you had these, Cindy? You've had these going for a while. Yeah, almost two months. Two I'd months. Say. So we'll mate, they'll lay eggs, the adults will die, and eventually we'll see teeny tiny uh, meal, small mealworms as they begin to molt and, and shed their skin, that is, and grow mm -hmm. uh, over time and then go through the metamorphosis. Now a couple of things oh. to keep in mind. One is that you, you sometimes, some of you who know about mealworms often get the supersize. 
And we always advise not getting the supersized because they don't seem to go through the same metamorphosis. No, very important point. Those are made to feed to, to pets at home, like turtles and, and, and such. And so they've managed to treat them in some way so that they don't change, so they're not very useful for using with children. All you did need to do is have some boats, put them in a container. So you're setting up a, a terrarium now for the mealworms. Just okay. as you did. Mm -hmm. And what we can do now is pour these mealworms into here, although I'm not going to do that for now. Just I just wanted people to see. The, these are in bran flakes. We can take them out individually and put them with oats. It doesn't matter. They can have oats or bran. Um, but what you'll notice is all you have to do is keep them in the container. You don't even need the lid, but many of you will want a lid, I'm sure. But they don't climb out, they, they don't, don't fly out, yeah. even though they do have wings. I've never seen one fly, to tell you the truth. No, it's very interesting. I was convinced when I first met these creatures that they would escape. Um, but the lid helps from other things getting in, like dogs' noses, babies' hands. The lid does come in handy for that. Great. That's important to know. And the other thing you'll notice is they don't need water. There is no yes. water. They, they can... Uh, they, and, they, don't, they do, every now and then, a small piece of apple or potato is a nice thing to put in the container. But you don't want to have too much because if the oats get wet, they'll mold. Um, and, the and I've mold. never put anything in there yet, and look, but and, and they, they, look, they look pretty healthy to me. So here we are. We're just saying, get mealworms for your classroom. You'll really, you won't regret it, and the students will really appreciate it. Bye.